Rosemary is a really popular herb. It's great for landscape use and it's also wonderful to use in our kitchens and the wonderful scent makes it really useful for other things indoors. It's also deer resistant and drought tolerant. The late winter and early spring blooms on most rosemaries will provide food for bees when not a lot of other things are blooming, although other varieties will bloom sporadically throughout the year. Some varieties have white, pale blue, or even pink blooms. The blooms are edible too, and they have a little bit softer flavor, so they're really ideal for using where you don't want the very strong flavor of rosemary to overpower a dish. All types may be used for culinary purposes, but I find that the pine scented ones are less useful if we're cooking with, but they're great for scenting the home. Now, rosemary likes full sun, but it will grow in dapple shade. Just give it less water and mulch. It grows best with good air circulation, so don't crowd the plants, and raised beds are ideal, especially if you have a clay soil. Incorporate granite or pea gravel to improve the drainage where you're planting your rosemary, and don't plant it if you've got a wet location in your yard, uh, it's not going to do well there. Don't over fertilize rosemary. I just use compost around them regularly to feed them. And you can mulch with a fine gravel or granite to keep them from getting too wet around the base. Prune dead branches on your rosemary anytime, and I like to give them a really good shaping in the early spring. All of those branches that I trim off are tied into bundles to fragrance my home. I'll make a strong tea to use for mopping floors and cleaning, and uh, make a strong tea to use in a bath or as a hair rinse. Rosemary also helps repel clothing moths, so it can be added to sachets and used in potpourri. The strong flavor is used to enhance meats. You can stuff chickens or turkeys for baking, and it's wonderful with beans and breads and potatoes. The springs, the sprigs tied together can be used for a basting brush or as a kebab skewer. And I trim my rosemary all the time with an eye to the overall shape, just making the trimming so that the plant is shaped nicely. Now there's two general types. There's the upright type and the more prostrate type. The upright forms are more cold hardy. Most are hardy to about 10 degrees. There's a variety named ARP that uh, was found in ARP, Texas by Madeline Hill, and that one is reported to be hardy to minus 15 and as far north as Washington, D.C. It has pale blue flowers. The Madeline Hill hardy is also cold tolerant. Tuscan blue has a really nice upright form. It has a beautiful shape, large leaves, and medium blue flowers. That's a very popular one. My new favorite, though, is this Garizia. The leaves are very thick. It's larger than most varieties, and it has pale blue flowers. It can be about five to six feet tall. Now, Spice Islands is another one with very upright form, very attractive. It has dark blue flowers. The prostrate forms are really nice for trailing down a wall or cascading from a container and most are only about two feet tall. Huntington carpet is kind of an in-between. It has curving, arching branches, light blue flowers, and tends to be about three feet tall. Wherever you have a garden, you'll need to find a place for rosemary because it's just a beautiful plant. For Backyard Basics, I'm Trisha Shari. Thanks for watching.